Today I want to talk about the Sooners most likely to have breakout seasons in 2019. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today I want to talk about the Sooners who are most likely to have breakout seasons in 2019. This is always one of my favorite uploads each year, like, because it's full of hope and optimism. And you really do have quite a list of candidates I want to get into, including some that I don't think that you thought about or maybe you have thought about but you're like oh yeah I forgot that dude was even on the team because just that loaded at the position but I also want to say my piece on the 2021 recruiting rankings now for those of you that just don't follow it that closely the top 247 recruiting rankings were released on Tuesday and Brock Vandegrift 2021 quarterback commit to Oklahoma moved up from 35 to 22. That's 13 spots. I understand that that's also not necessarily where most people have him ranked, including one Rivals.com that has him as the number one overall recruit in the 2021 class. And in large part, that makes him the number two overall recruit in the 247 composite. So in large part due to his ranking in top 247 is why he's not the number one prospect in the top in the 247 composite and Sam Heward is. Now, I know that Brandon Drum has had things to say about this. I've had said things to say about this on the Young and Drum podcast. I don't really get into the rigmarole that is rankings, though I like to reference them. I like to talk about them. I like to use them as a metric because it makes it easier for you, the fan, who doesn't really watch as much high school football or college football as those of us that get paid to do it because you have a life to lead and the four star five star three star system two star system helps you understand what we think of this player and there are going to be times where we grossly disagree and these are one of those moments but I mean it's up to Brock Vandergriff honestly that dude is a player he absolutely can play the position of quarterback we know that Lincoln made him his guy and that should have some bearing on everybody's rankings and I think it does because he did move up 13 spots but to be reactionary to just what Lincoln Riley thinks is also just wrong and quite honestly stupid we all have our opinions we all have reasons to have our opinions and that's what rankings are they're opinions by committee we vote about it right just like vote president some of us agree some of us disagree it is what it is while we're at it cody jackson the only other commit to the 2021 class who is a quarterback by trade at foster richmond plans to play wide receiver at oklahoma six foot 169 pounds he dropped one spot from 53 to 54. not a big deal if you're me might be a big deal if you're him Still don't really think it's that big a deal to anybody else, honestly. I do think that it's interesting to note that Ethan Downs went up quite a bit into the top 100 than the top 247, and he's ranked at number 99. This is not just a big deal because this is an Oklahoma prep that is getting some love. It is also a big deal because he's ranked like 32 spots ahead of Kendrick Blackshear. For those of you that haven't been watching that many videos i'm very high on kendrick blackshear and i think most people who've even seen kendrick blackshear are very high on him the dude looks the part plays the part transferred to duncanville he's going to get more opportunities to probably turn into an edge rusher as opposed to inside linebacker but i still think he projects that inside linebacker that dude's ranked number 131 and i think he was committed to texas or oklahoma he'd probably be ranked a little bit higher because well you can draw conclusions there again I think the star system works. I think the composite is there for that reason. When top 247 or rivals or ESPN disagree grossly, and usually it's ESPN that's the outlier on a recruit, the 247 composite is there to, you know, hey, look, these are the other networks. This is what they think. This is why we have the composite. And I think those are things that you need to reference going forward. I also think that it's interesting that Quentin Somerville dropped 21 spots to 39 in this latest ranking and that dude is crystal ball to Oklahoma for the most part and there's lots of other dudes that we could talk about but those are my takeaways from it again the rankings dropped they're gonna continue to be in flux they're not final 
until like 18 months from now. So if you want to get upset about them, fine. If you don't want to get upset about them, that makes you sane and that makes it okay. We're still in a 2020 recruiting cycle and now we almost literally have football to root for and watch at the college level and the high school level. I'm excited about that. And with that in mind, breakout guys. Now, my buddy Helmer put this list together and I mostly disagree with it. He doesn't rank anybody, but I don't think he left anybody off of note either outside of the true freshmen. And I understand that there are true freshmen that you do believe, and I believe that can break out this year. I'm just not necessarily going to reference all of those guys because they're true freshmen. I'm talking about guys that just haven't had opportunities to get the touches or haven't had opportunities to get the tackles. All right. So the first one is Braden Willis fullback. I think that dude has an opportunity to turn into what Dimitri Flowers was. Uh, this largely based on why Lincoln Riley likes to use his H-back tight end types, right? And if he's got a guy that he thinks is like Dimitri Flowers, who caught 26 passes for 464 yards and five touchdowns during the 2017 season, also finished with 13 career touchdowns, you're going to use him. But if you got a guy like Carson Meyer, maybe you're not going to use him so much. Although he did have a similar impact with 327 yards, four touchdowns on 19 catches a year ago. And there's evidence that supporting production for Braden Willis rather than perhaps Jeremiah Hall, who I'm not really that high on, is going to make the offense run better, especially with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. Now, last season, both Hall and Willis obviously got touches and hauled in, I think, all, all of two catches for 36 yards. And Willis had the one for 29 yards. And that's not a whole lot, right? I think that's one of the reasons why Brayden Willis was asked to move to this H-back fullback position because they thought him being the wide receiver was just, I mean, you're buried on the depth chart. There's Grant Calcaterra, there's Lee Morris, and now there's Austin Stockner. Let's put you in a position where we can use your football mind and you can use your ability as a former high school quarterback to help us as an offense, blocking, running the ball, and obviously catching it out of the backfield. I think that dude could break out. Next guy on the list that I wanted to reference is a guy that everybody is very high on, Jalen Redmond, outside linebacker, rush end. I don't think that blood clots are a thing to play with, but I'm not making the decisions. And I'm also not on the OU medical staff. And I'm sure that, you know, they have a better read on Jalen Redmond's health situation than I do. I just know it's not something I want to play with. That said, if the dude's fully healthy and he's fully ready to go, we have evidence to show he can ball out for you. Now, that's the only real question is whether or not he's healthy, but six foot three, 264 pounds. Dude came out of Midwest City and only played a little bit of football and was an absolute stud, an All-American. And then last year, when he was in the mix, six tackles, two and a half for loss. And after working out just slightly and lightly this spring and then bringing him back slowly over the summer, he's absolutely a guy you think could help you. Matter of fact, my buddy Brandon Drum has him at the top of the depth chart at the rush-in position, which I think is a loaded position for Oklahoma. And I kind of got him, you know, kind of next to Mark Jackson on that end and with the freshman kind of bringing up the back end of the depth chart. But there's certainly a case for Jalen Redmond to be a breakout star for Oklahoma, particularly at a pass-rushing position, a position of great stature at Oklahoma. I mean, not just Oboe, Oronquo, but Eric Stryker. And we can keep going about the guys that absolutely come off the edge and a foot nine and go kill a quarterback. Jalen Redman certainly fits into that category. Another guy also on the defensive line, Ronnie Perkins. That dude was, he, he's been chirping on Twitter, but I think he wants to smoke. He was a freshman All-American, according to ESPN. Had 37 tackles last year, which was quite a bit, including a team-high five sacks and a team, uh, well, a third best, eight tackles for loss. He's six foot three, two forty eight. Demonstrated the potential to fly. He could play the stand up, rush in. He could also play the, you know, three point stance, strong side defensive end. I think you're gonna have an option to two platoon him with Kenneth Mann, who by the way was a captain last year, and I thought needed to show and did show that he could stop the run. Ronnie Perkins, though, I think has more talent, more raw ability. And in this, his sophomore season, he could be the guy that we all thought Jalen Redmond might be before the health concerns became an issue. Ronnie Perkins, definitely a guy that has an opportunity to break out. Next guy on the list is, for me, 
I got a hard time putting DeLair and Turner Yale on the list, but I understand why Joey did. And I'm kind of talking about him now because Brandon talked about him. He's kind of in my ear because we just recorded a podcast, the Young and Drum podcast. If you want to go check that out where we talk about the rankings, we talk about uh, the champion barbecue, and we talk about, of course, preview, previewing camp. But I don't know, man. I look at DeLair and Turner yell, and I see 12 tackles. I see a pass breakup. I see played, you know, the final seven games. I also see he got torched in the semifinal. And outside of Robert Barnes, he's probably the worst safety that got run against Alabama. Could he break out? Yeah. Is he probably the heaviest hitter in the defensive backfield? Also, yeah. But I don't like him nearly as much as I like Pat Fields. I think Pat Fields is kind of at the top of my list of guys that have an opportunity to make a real dent on the 2019 defensive backfield because I think Grinch is going to put guys back there that ain't just they're just not going to make mistakes. I think you would much rather have a guy who's going to keep the play in front of him and get you off the field on third down rather than a guy who's going to try to go jump a route or make a big hit and miss and get you beat for six because you can't make up six points in the way that you used to. And certainly you would rather get off the field and get the ball back for your offense than get beat deep on an explosive play. You want guys that are going to stay in their lanes. They're going to know what the play call is. They're going to follow through and do their job. I think Pat Fields is at the top of that list. He can play some nickel. Play some free, he plays some strong. I think Delaire Turner Yale has more to learn. And I think that he's not gonna get as much run as most people think. Now, after him, a guy that everybody seems to have on their list at the top for guys that can break out, Charleston Rambo. Why? Because you need somebody that can come in and do the, the job that Hollywood Brown did, that DD Westbrook did. The slight, fast, just flat out flanker on the outside, the Z position. Dude runs go routes, post routes, and can beat anybody off the ball. And that was what Charleston Rambo showed he could do in the Orange Bowl. 49-yard touchdown pass from Kyler Murray that really vaulted him into the front of the line when we're talking about that Z position, where I think they're actually pretty deep. You can run Trajan Bridges out there. You can run Jaqueline Crawford out there. But Rambo seems like the guy, if for no other reason than Again, accounting for 125 yards and a touchdown, eight catches. And, of course, what I said in the Capital One Orange Bowl was able to show, hey, man, I got it like that. I also think that he's going to have help in that C.D. Lamb is on the other side of him, and he's going to be on the right side of the field. And I'm fond of telling you, Jalen Hurts did not show that he could throw the ball deep down the left side of the field. He did show, however, that he could throw the ball very well deep down the right side of the field, and Charleston Rambo is going to be there, and he's probably going to have beat the coverage and take the top off the defense. He could have a big year. He could have the kind of year that we saw Hollywood have last year, and that would definitely make him the breakout player on that offense, and he's got the best case to do it. Another guy that, to think about is LaRon Stokes on the defensive line. I know that I didn't mention him or didn't mention him enough in my – big overloaded football preview for the season but dude comes out of Tulsa no a prospect I think he's the first ever homeschool kid to earn a scholarship to play football at Oklahoma which is a big deal had 76 tackles and seven sacks at, at NEO last year had offers from Oregon chose Oklahoma late Lincoln Riley said that the biggest recruiting coup of his career so far has been putting together the defensive class for for this year, for which LaRon Stokes was a big part and a big win. I think that he could bolster you at in. He could bolster you in the five or three, even three technique on defensive tackle side. I think LaRon Stokes has all the ability in the world, and I would love to see him get an opportunity to put that ability on display, particularly in a defensive tackle backfield that isn't necessarily deep, but it ain't shallow either. I think that if he can move his way into the rotation, whether it be on the end positions or the tackle positions, he is a guy that has an opportunity to break out this year. Adrian Ely, this is your year, dog. This year is your year. It's you, I think, at right tackle and not a whole lot else. I mean, we could talk about Eric Swenson at left tackle, and we could talk about maybe having Bray Walker at that position. We could talk about Daryl Simpson. But I really do think that this is going to be Creed Humphrey, R.J. Proctor, and Adrian Ely's line. And I know that there's a lot of folks that think that the offensive line, particularly outside of OU football land, is going to be bad because they lost four starters. Well, I mean, all, all Bill Beatonbow did in 2017 was put together a line nobody thought was going to be any good. And the same thing in 2018. I mean, we saw Cody Ford start at right tackle in 2018 when he never played right tackle before in his life. And he was the first 
offensive lineman taken off the board for Oklahoma in 2019 because he was just that good. In a year where folks didn't know if Bobby Evans was going to be a guy that was even drafted in the first four rounds. And then Ben Powers and Drew Samia also guys that were drafted in the first four rounds. And with R.J. Proctor next to Creed Humphrey, you know that Tyrese Robinson is going to probably earn that other right guard position. And then you're talking about, is it Swenson? Is it Hayes? Is it Ely? I think Ely has an opportunity to cement his place on that offensive line, particularly at right tackle, where you get to do some of that just rolling people up, man. You get to do a lot of down blocking. You get to show out. I think Adrian Ely has an opportunity to do that. Next guy is, for, for many, Grant Calcaterra. Here's my issue with putting Grant Calcaterra in this list. He should have been, he's been on this list for like three years, number one, okay? I know that he's got the ability to be all Big 12 and the ability to be an All-American. I also know that last year he had 26 catches for 396 yards and started 11 out of 14 games. And I know that a lot of people want to make him the next Mark Andrews. I don't even think he's the best player at his position. I think Lee Morris is the best player at that Y position, and I think he's going to have an opportunity to cement that this year. I understand he came out of nowhere last year. He was your breakout star of the 2018 season, if you're asking me. I liked his game. I liked his chemistry with Kyler Murray. I think that he has the build to play that position. I know that Grant Calcaterra was the more highly regarded guy. I know that he was the guy that was brought in to be the heir apparent to Mark Andrews. I also know Jeremiah Hall was brought in to be the heir apparent to Demetri Flowers, and that ain't necessarily working out. I think that if people are actually paying attention to what they saw last year, they would think about Grant Calcaterra the way I think about Grant Calcaterra, which is to say, it ain't that you can't, it's that you haven't. And yes, that makes him a candidate for this list once again. I think the goal is to get off this list. The goal is to become a guy who we expect to be really good. You'll notice CeeDee Lamb ain't on this list. Kennedy Brooks ain't on this list. Trey Sermon ain't on this list. Kenneth Murray Jr. ain't on this list. You get where I'm going with this? Neville Gallimore, not on this list. You want to get off this list. That's the whole point, right? We're saying break out because you haven't broken out. Greg Calcaterra, it's time to break out. That or just everybody needs to admit Lee Morris is the better tight end, which I'm fine with because they're both really good. And at the top of my list of players with an opportunity to break out this year, Deshaun White. Everything I hear, all the sourcing is Deshaun White is the best natural linebacker at Oklahoma right now. That means better than Kenneth Murray Jr., Levi Draper, Brian Mead, Jonathan Perkins, Brian Asamoah. He's just got it like that. And for a guy that played safety, moved to outside linebacker, came here to learn to play Mike, redshirted last year, you're looking for somebody to come up alongside Kenneth Murray Jr. in that will linebacker position and take over the role because Caleb Kelly blew out his ACL. and He's out at least until November at the earliest. You want to know that you have a guy that you can depend on to not just play this year, but the following year, and maybe even have an opportunity to leave after that. Deshaun White gives you the best opportunity to be that guy. I also think a lot of this is dependent on Kenneth Murray Jr. and who his best running mate is. I think if Kenneth Murray Jr. plays better with Deshaun White on the field, that's going to be his partner. I think if Kenneth Murray Jr. plays better with Brian Mead or Levi Draper, that's going to be his partner. I think a lot of the battle at will is going to be dependent on Kenneth Murray Jr. because he's the straw stirring the drink as we speak right now. How am I doing on time? Okay, 20 minutes. We're good. Those are the that's, – that's about what I wanted to cover. I thought that perhaps you could say maybe – that you got an opportunity for Miguel Edwards to be a breakout star at corner because he just hasn't got that run, especially since, you know, 18 months ago, we're talking about him being the defensive star outside of Levi Draper, who had the most tackles in that spring game. I'd like to see him get an opportunity, but I also understand you're buried. I mean, Trey Brown, Parnell Motley, Woody Washington, Jaden Davis, depending on what you want to do with Justin Broyles or Jordan Parker, you, you got a lot of cornerbacks to choose from, and I, and I want to see Miguel Edwards have an opportunity to win that job. I'd also like to see Buki move back to corner, and we know how I feel about that. All right, that is it for me. Doses.